guys may be wondering why I brought you here today. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to look at spot metering now. And so the spot meter, where, where are your homies? There you are. Let's get this out of the way. Are we using this at all? No? Do we this? Let's get that out of the way. Um, so the spot meter um, is basically what measures reflectance. Um, and it measures what is coming off, the light that's coming off any object that you read. So whereas the incident meter uh, measures light that's falling onto the lumosphere, the spot meter measures light that's reflecting off of it. So the, the spot meter doesn't really care what it's looking at. Um, it, all it wants to do is bring everything to middle gray. Um, which is 18% gray. So middle gray is actually this color right here, the second color, the second little gray color. Um, so basically all the spot meter is doing is, is trying to make this at normal exposure. And that's what your actual, like a lot of our stills cameras, what they want to do, um, that's the meter that's built into your like A7S, A7R, whatever. So that's why I try not to use um, the in built-in camera meter because it's always measuring reflectance. So if I go ahead and take him, and I should also note that middle gray is different for every camera. So um, on the FS7 shooting S-Log3, I, actually S-Log3 at, at all for that matter, um, it places middle gray at 41 IRE. You guys know how to read waveforms? Kind of, maybe, sort of? Yes. A little bit. The so if I bring up the scopes here, um, so this is the waveform, and this basically, this is your IRE scale, and you can kind of see where these lines are, are lining up. 90% um, white is falling kind of just under 75, um, and these are all kind of the corresponding lines. So this one right here is middle gray, and so different cameras have different, uh, they place at different gamma profiles, they place middle gray differently. So if I'm shooting S-Log3, I know from the white papers that Sony publishes, um, and this is just like, like if you shoot on the GH5, if you shoot on red, whatever, um, you want to make sure that you know where your gamma profile places middle gray because it'll be different for each camera. So that S-Log3 uh, middle gray um, is at 40 IRE, around 41 IRE, which is kind of around here. So if I go ahead and take my spot meter, and you can try this too if you want. Um, and it's also important to note that you always want to take spot meter readings from the same uh, angle that your camera is placed because light reflects differently um, depending on your angle. Um, so that's why you always want a spot meter from the camera angle. So if I take a meter reading of 18% gray there, it's giving me a reading of F8. So I'm going to actually right there, I'm at an F8. Um, so if I take a look at my waveform, let's see, it's kind of splitting 50 and 25. Um, and actually, if I go here, I'm actually going to go on the other side. If I go here, OK, yeah, this one's good. Um, can someone get this? Or I guess Jeremy. And you guys can come around and see this monitor, too. That one is a little hard to see. And just make sure you don't cover the light. Um, so right now, my spot meter reading is telling me that 18% gray is at an F8. I'm at an F8 right now. But if you look here, let me actually adjust my waveform settings. I'm going to go to uh, not spot meter, legend. Yeah, legend number label six. So right now, um, it should be right around 40 RE, but it's not. Um, and that's because this is a bit of an older meter. Um, and now, since gamma profiles are all over the place, it doesn't actually add up one to one. Um, you can solve this a couple different ways. You can either iris up. And while I'm taking a look at this here, I'll just kind of place it right around 40 RE and that 41 RE. And that'll, that technically should be normal exposure. I'll take another meter reading. And right now, sorry, that's wrong one. And then you can actually adjust. Um, I'm at a 6.3, so I can adjust my ISO button and adjust it so that 
what I'm seeing on the monitor corresponds with the actual iris that I'm at. So you can actually use spot meters as like a calibration tool to kind of know how much to overexpose by or how much to um, underexpose by. Um, so to get around this, basically this is telling me that whenever I take a spot meter reading, it's a stop under. So to fix that, I always use a speed booster, which always gives me a stop back. So that by, by using the speed booster, that, also, that not only gives me a, like a wider field of view, um, but it also gives me an extra stop of light. And so that way it kind of re-calibrates kind of calibrates itself. So that whenever I take a meter reading, I know that I don't have to comp use my exposure compensation or whatever. Um, I can just take a reading and know that what I'm getting is right. So can we get the speed booster on? Speed booster is on. Where are you at? That's real bright back there. That it is. <laughs> All right, so I will just reframe up. So now I have the speed booster. So now I have an extra stop of light on whatever I'm doing. So I'll take another spot meter reading on 80% gray. Let's see. Now I'm getting a Let's see the second one. Oh, that's right, it's just in there. So I'll take another spot meter reading. And I'm still getting an eight, so I'll stop down to an eight. One stop. If I check my IRE scale, you can see right now that 18% uh, gray is landing right at around 40 IRE. Um, and actually, I'll adjust this one so you can kind of more visually see that waveform legend. Six. So now I have six number rows. So basically, this is 40. 40 Gary, and you'll see that it is pretty close. It closely lines up. Another thing to note, too, is that um, when you're using f stops with your like DSLR or stills lenses, like we all have Sigma lenses here, um, that your f stops won't be quite exact because we're not using t stops. And so that's another reason that we love, we all like love cinema lenses is because they all have T-stops and they calculate how much, they calculate for transmission basically. So a T1.5 a T is actually a 1.5. Here if I open up um, all the way to a 1.4 on my stills lens, it'll probably be not a 1.4, it'll probably be a 2-ish. And that's why the Sigma Cine zooms, um, that's why they're, they are actually T2 because they account for transmission. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I might look, up, uh, look at my camera and say, oh, I'm at an F8. But as you can see here, it doesn't quite add up. It's not quite uh, riding that uh, 40. Um, it's pretty close. It's close enough to what I would shoot at. Um, but that's also something to know. So that's basically the spot meter. Whatever you look at, um, it will try to make it uh, to middle gray. So for instance, if I look at 90% white, this top one right here, I'll go ahead and take a meter reading of that. And right now I'm at 16 and almost a third. So I'm going to go all the way down to a 16. And look at that. This white line is hitting right around 40 IRE. So if we actually turned off the saturation on this image, those two, these two blotches would look the same. Um, if you held them, if you hold those two shots next to each other. So conversely, I'm going to go down. So I'm going to go to the third. Third boy. Let's see, right there. Right now I'm getting a four, about a four and a half. So I'm going to go all the way up to a four and close down. So right now I'm at an F5. And you can see there, yep, writing 
40 RE. And then I'll do that for that pure black one right at the bottom. Right now that one's at a 1.4 1 and almost a third. So I'll just open all the way up. And you can see this line, this black line is almost um, at 40 RE. Like I said, the, it doesn't really account for transmission. So that's why there's kind of that discrepancy there. Um, but that is the job of the spot meter, is to bring whatever it's looking at to middle gray. So the way I use it is that um, I'll use the, the f-stop that I'm shooting at, I'll use that as my reference point. And we'll get to that in uh, another scene. Um, but basically, if I'm calculating how much dynamic range I have in a scene, I'll use my f-stop as a reference point, And I'll use my spot meter, take a reading, and then however high or however below that reading is from my actual f-stop, that's, that's how I gauge dynamic range. Um, and yeah, what's up? So what's the definition of transmission? What do you mean? What's the, what it's the light that's traveling through, transmitting through the lens. So right now I'm all the way open at a 1.4. Um, and you can see that it doesn't quite reach uh, 40R, it doesn't quite reach this line. Yeah, and then um, that's that's why, like, this, if I had a Sigma, one of those Sigma Zoom, or the, yeah, any of those Sigma Cines, um, those are at a T2, so I obviously wouldn't be able to expose for that, but yeah, that's why all Cinema lenses are, are they use T stops rather than F stops. And as far as interpreting on a light meter, um, like, are you just converting the f-stops to t-stops essentially when you're using yeah, this yeah, with cinema lenses? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. So that's pretty much it. And then you said you're always exposing, you're trying to expose for middle gray, like when you're looking. That is what the spot meter is trying to do. Okay. So if I went and if I, so I want to expose this at middle gray. Middle gray is kind of a weird term. Middle gray, you can almost think of middle gray as normal exposure. Um, but not everything wants to be normal exposure. Okay. Um, so that's another good point is that even though, so let me go ahead and take another reading of 18% gray right here. All right, that's an F8. I'm going to go close down to an F8. Um, and then if I take a reading of 90% of white, that's giving me a reading of F16. Um, but if I go down to an F16, that no longer looks white. It looks middle gray. So that's, that's one thing that you kind of have to shift in your brain a little bit. Like, I remember when I first started using the spot meter, I would try to uh, meter someone's skin, or I would try to meter something just from the spot meter. But um, it's OK that it is two or three or four stops over what your actual f-stop is. Because whatever tone it's looking at, um, it, it will all kind of be different relative to what you're trying to convey. So for skin tones, I probably wouldn't use this. If I, if I had someone that had really darker skin tone, um, I, would, I would maybe use the spot meter because I know that this is trying to bring it to 40, 41 IRE. And that's usually where I try to bring uh, darker skin tones. But if someone has like really pale skin, really white, I'd want them to land 50 to 60 IRE. And that's not what the spot meter is trying to do. The spot meter is just solely trying to bring it down to middle gray, 40, 40 IRE. So that's why I always use a speed booster, and that, um, that kind of calibrates um, uh, using S log. And that just helps me kind of expose faster. So that way, you can use the exposure to get If you didn't have a speed booster, you could use exposure compensation and always expose over by one stop. Um, you can kind of, you can also set your ISO. So uh, FS7 ISO is 2000 native. You can set it to 1000, and then that will kind of always expose the way you want it. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to kind of calibrate um, where middle gray is. How often do you do that? Like how often do you do well, it, I mean, you do it once. You, it's, um, just, yeah, you it's just there. You just, yeah, for that camera. Oh, yeah. So it's different for every camera. So I think Panasonic Vlog, I think they actually expose like 42 IRE. So it'd probably be pretty similar. Um, the one thing you do need, though, is you do need a color checker um, because these colors are calibrated and um, it's a very specific shade. These are all very specific tones. And I know for a fact that this is, this is supposed to read at middle gray. 
And so middle gray on this, like each light meter and each camera perceives middle gray differently, which is why you kind of have to calibrate them. So if you have a color checker, um, find out what, uh, find out how your gamma profile places middle gray. Use your spot meter and see how that, see if that lines up with your camera. If it doesn't line up with the camera, adjust your ISO, use exposure compensation, or what I do, what I do, use a speed booster. Theoretically speaking, just color check any time that you get the chance for any scene, or is it more for like if you're setting up an interview? No, I only, well, see, I only use this when I'm actually calibrated. So if I was using different cameras, I'd want to test it first. Okay. So I, I wouldn't, I don't bust this out every time I want to. Um, I mean, you can if you're setting up an interview, you don't have talent. You can set this up, spot meter this to middle gray, and you'll know how you'll have exposure. But you can also use your incident meter. Um, and it's kind of, this is kind of a pain in the ass, just trying to set it up every time. So I only really use this for testing and calibration purposes, the color checker. Um, so for like if you're doing latitude testing and stuff like that, I'd use the color checker. But in terms of actually exposing um, in the field, I probably wouldn't use. So for Sony's white paper and, uh, and anyone else's white paper, when they say that they're mapping their uh, middle gray to whatever IRE, is it using that specific log profile with a LUT over top? It's using straight log. Straight log. Yeah. So 41 IRE for, for log three. For log, yeah. Yeah. So theoretically, if you're viewing your um, your image and your color chart through a LUT, mm -hmm. that would have possibly not. Yeah, it would, it would be a little off. And that's why I think this should, yeah. So right now, what you're looking at, there's no LUT on this. Um, there's no LUT on that. I don't think there's a LUT on that. Is there a LUT on that? No, so there's no LUT on this either. So what we've been looking at on the monitors is all just straight S log. Um, and that's, that's a really good point because LUTs also do different things. So once you start introducing LUTs into the mix, that'll just throw, it won't throw everything out the window, but it, um, they apply different curves to the image, which is why when you are doing this, you always want to be looking at log. Um, and that's what we've been doing on all these monitors. So and that's for that's for internal LUTs, right? Does the same apply to when you're yeah any LUTs at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So even when you're exporting to your monitor, then yeah, because LUTs do gamma curve conversions, okay. yeah. basically. And so if your log image is asking for 41 IRE at four middle gray, and you're using different LUTs, if you meter and calibrate to middle gray on your log image. Whatever LUT you use, you know oh, that yeah. your baseline is constant okay. throughout. Yeah. So there's you, no. So that's why yeah. you said you always want to test it. Yeah, you're, yeah, exactly. You're, and then test also in log too. So when they publish, when manufacturers publish their white papers, um, they're referencing that to log. Okay. Um, and you can still put your LUT on on top of that. Like after you're done with all of this yeah. and you're, you've achieved exposure of, all right, let's throw talent in. You can then throw talent on top of that and then. Um, It'll look good because you know you've calibrated your meter and stuff like that. So, um, but when you're actually doing your testing and calibration, you do always want to do log. Anyone else? What about like when you have like a client like watching monitor? Does that affect anything? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, no. Usually, well, I don't usually do any of this with clients. Um, yeah, so like once I have it calibrated, I know that in my head. So that, that way when I show up on set, I'll take my meter reading with all that already in mind. And then I'll just throw up Rec 709 or whatever else on the monitor and just have them look at that. Um, and even though, um, I know we just said not to use Rec 709, but, like, but if you're just for monitoring purposes, that's fine. Um, yeah. So this testing calibration happens on prep day, not on yeah. the day. Yeah. Or whenever else, yeah. If you're just bored in your garage <laughs> with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Doing a line meter video. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 that's weird. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's like my kind of party. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's spot meter basics. Any, anything else? Anybody have any other questions? What would you use the, the colors for, like specifically? Is there any purpose for that? that you yeah, so you can use them a couple different ways. I know that in Resolve, you can bring this in, and like it'll kind of calibrate the image for you. I think Jeremy has a little bit more experience in that field than I, than I do. But 
the main reason I would use it if I'm doing latitude testing. So latitude testing is when you're testing the camera's dynamic range. You essentially expose it one step over, two steps over, three, four, five. Six. You basically expose, overexpose, and underexpose until the image just breaks apart. And then while you're doing that, you can see how that affects these colors. Yeah. So if you, so one, you'd shoot your reference with just normal exposure. Everything is, everything looks normal. This is obviously under. So actually, let me go to an F8. Open up to an F8. So this is normal exposure. So if I started, if I expose this image one stop over. Uh, scoop. If I expose this one stop over, it'll be brighter. But if I bring it down and post, how does that affect these colors? And how does that affect skin tones? If I expose two steps over, um, these will all start to become really different. And you can see how those colors kind of shift as you overexpose or underexpose. So. So you're pretty much just using the light meter specifically for the. Yeah, basically for these. Okay. Yeah. Mainly, mainly this one. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like it does help to get close. And also, as uh, I think I've explained to like Christian and like a few other people before, I think that's why Rob's stuff, not to like toot anybody's horn here, but I think sure. that's why Rob's stuff looks as good as it does, is because he understands the color science behind it, and he understands how his camera performs in different situations and how that's going to affect the overall picture. So uh, something like this, obviously, getting to sit down and figure out the IRE of your camera and really then start to play with it is... I think really valuable. Yeah, it, it definitely helps knowing, and I've spent over two years with this camera, so like I pretty much know this camera in and out. Um, and it's only when you get to, and like you'll figure, you guys will figure out, like once you spend some time with the camera, you'll be oh, like, like things will just start to make sense. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it gets it gets really technical really quick, but it's, it's really not that bad. Down. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, anything else? Oh, let's go.